Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this great opportunity to bring His truth to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. As you always do, we open our hearts to receive your truth. And your truth is indeed making us free. So we walk in every liberty that you lead us into today. And I declare right now that every body is removed, the yokes are being destroyed in everyone's life, in listening and hearing my voice right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, I've been talking to you from John chapter 4. Jesus talking to the woman at the well. And, and let's read that again from verse 23. Jesus said, said, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Jesus said something very striking here. He said, the time is coming and not coming again. It is now. What time is he talking about? He said, when the true worshippers will worship the Father. So what has happened before now? What has, what, what, what was, who was David? Who was Abraham? Who all those mighty men will read about in scriptures? Because Jesus said, it is now that the True worshippers are going to worship the Father. You see, because that's the people the Father is seeking to worship Him. If you understand this, you will take your Christian life, you will take your life more seriously than you do. That the that to think of the fact that God is seeking for you to worship Him. Now, this kind of seeking is not. A man sitting down there and he say, oh, I wish someone can worship me. I wish someone can worship me. No, that's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about is, you know how you like, no, no, I, I've listened to several songs or I've listened to several things. It is your own that I want to hear. Praise God. Your own. The one that is coming from you that I want to get, that I want. That's what I want to hear. You see, that's how the Father feels towards us. When he says, when Jesus said, the true worshippers. First, they were made true worshippers. That is us today. Now, how do you worship the Father in truth and in spirit? How do you, how do you know you are a true worshipper? I will tell you why. Because without the presence and the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life, you truly cannot worship God. You know, there are lots of assumptions people make. You know, you go to church and they are playing some wonderful song that you like. And then you begin to dance and dance and roll on the floor. And you know, sometimes when the pastor says, can, can you see how we are worshipping God? We are rolling on the floor to worship God. Hey, do you think God accepts all that worship? You, you think the rolling on the floor is what God loves to see? You no, know, just imagine God say, angels, angels, come and see, come and see. See my children, they are worshipping me. See, they are rolling on the floor. Hey, they are getting dirty because of me. You think that's what excites God? Those are emotions we display. And it doesn't mean they are truth. You see, that's why someone will finish worshipping God like that and still go home the same. He, he came in broke. He rolled on the floor being broke. He gets up broke. He goes home broke. Two years from that day, he's still broke. Nothing changes. And he's wondering. Maybe God doesn't respond to us. No. There are things you do that God has no choice but to respond. You know, people don't understand this, but I'm telling you the truth. I want to be, for many years, I mean many years ago, it has always been my thought and it still is. I don't want to just do something because others are doing it. I don't want to do something because I assume it's the right thing to do. I want to do something because I know that is exactly what God wants me to do. That is how it works. Now, when I'm convinced that this is what God wants me to do, 
Now, this has helped me in everything. It has helped me in counseling people. It, you, know, you know, sometimes people try to get my attention. You know, oh, pastor, please, I want to talk to you, you know, and, and this, this. I say, okay, okay, okay. And then at some point, I just log off. Like, you know what, um, can we talk about this later? He said, when? He said, don't worry, I'll contact you. Why? You see, because you're talking and you're not hearing the Lord say anything. I mean, there is no point going on with that conversation. There is no point because you, you really can help the person. But, but, you see, sometimes you're talking to someone and while the person was, is talking, the Spirit of God begins to say something. Now, you know, he's in in this conversation. So I know every word I'm going to say to this person. If they act on it, they will see results. See, that's how it works. Now, what is that true worship? See, people think worship is lifting up of hands and singing and crying. People think that's just what worship is. No, sir. Worship, you know, we, we can sing to the Lord in worship, yeah? We can show emotions when we worship the Lord. When, when we pray, we, we show worship. We, we worship God when we pray. But the most important part of worship, and listen, if you miss this part, your praying, your singing is useless. The most important part of worship is this, obedience. That's what Samuel said to King Saul. He says, look, it is better to obey than to offer sacrifices. Yeah. God doesn't delight so much in sacrifices, but that you will obey his voice. So he told him, obedience is better than sacrifice. But the sacrifice is to worship God. He said, yes, but obedience. What is the use of a sacrifice when it is not needed? What is the use of your singing when it's not needed? There is a time when God will command you to sing. Now, that singing becomes an act of obedience. It has become true worship. There is a time God will ask you to pray. That prayer becomes an act of obedience. And then it's true worship. Now, that's why, now why am I sharing this, this aspect with you? We just finished a series on, 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 on God's financial plan or, or God's financial system. And I began talking to you about tithing and giving. And the, the, the main point of this is giving by obedience. And obedience to what? Your pastor? No. I'm not talking about obeying your pastor. That's another day's talk. I'm talking about you personally hearing the voice of God yourself and responding to that voice yourself. Listen. It's not everybody that brings tithes that God receives. I'm telling you the truth. But when your tithe is now an act of obedience to him, brothers and sisters, he sure receives it. And when you know he has received it, you know one thing. You will get a response from heaven. Surely you will. There is no way God will speak to you about something and you will obey him where that thing is concerned that he will not receive that offering. Because it is now a sacrifice. If God says, hey, tomorrow morning, I want you to get to so so town. And I said, okay, sir. And then that day you, you set on your path and you get to that town. You know that is an act of worship? It's an act of worship. You remember when Jesus was being tempted by, by, by Satan and he says, look, Showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. And told him, look, all this I will give to you if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, no, no, no. It has been said to me. Thou shalt worship the Lord your God. And him, him only shall you serve. What does Jesus say? He said, he's, in, he's only God I'm going to sing to or bow down to or kneel to. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, hey, Satan, listen. God have told me that it is only by his instruction that I will live and only that. So, so when, when Moses told them in, in the channel, he says, look, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God shall man live. What does he say? He's saying, look, look, if God does not speak to you and you act on his word, you are not living. And, and, and that's a very powerful statement. This, this, is, this is so true. This is so true. You know, I said it yesterday or the day before yesterday that, look, when you don't hear the voice of God, I truly wonder how you live. I wonder how you live. You don't want to live your life to chance. You don't want to live your life, you know, just, you know, let me see what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't want to live your life that way. You want to live your life with so much confidence that God is with you. He will help you. He will strengthen you. He will take care of tomorrow. You want to live your life with that kind of confidence. You know, uh, you know, you know, sometimes, like, for example, a, a young lady, you know, this man is interested in you, and, and you look at him, you don't see anything physically, you know, that is inviting in his life. Hey, let me, let me advise you. One thing you need to look out for is what gives this man confidence in life. If his confidence is because, oh, he has a rich dad or a rich uncle who he's going to meet and he's going to sponsor his wedding. You know, most times it's who sponsor the wedding they are looking for. They are not looking for who sponsor the marriage. See? So they are looking for who sponsor the wedding. Hey, it's not good enough. Find a man whose confidence is in God. And I don't mean by him just talking it. I don't mean someone that see, my confidence is in God. Though. I'm talking about someone who you will see that his confidence is in the Lord. How will I know a man whose confidence is in the Lord? It's very simple. You're looking at a man who's always looking for the word of the Lord in every situation. He's looking for what God has to say. So when he asks, so how are you going to do that? I don't know. I'm just trusting God to tell me exactly what to do. He's like, hey, is that how he talks to you? He say, yeah. And you want to hear testimonies. Real testimonies, I mean. You, you want to hear testimonies. Before you commit your life to someone, you want to hear testimonies of who he has been with the Lord. You want to see if God truly knows this person. And does this person really know God? <laughs> you, know, you know, most ladies ask them, what kind of husband are you? I know, first thing, a God-fearing man. How do you know a God-fearing man? A God-fearing man is not a, because he's a pastor. There are pastors that are not God-fearing at all. What does it mean, God-fearing? It's not just, so, so, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of God. Oh. I'm afraid of God. Hey, you say, hey, why don't you steal? Ah, I'm afraid of God. Oh. I can't steal. Oh. I'm afraid of God. What are you afraid of? That, you need to find out. What are you afraid of? Ah, if I steal, God will kill me. Such a person will eventually steal. Trust me. Trust me. When, when, when you hear people talk like that, you know, why, why don't you do this? Ah, I don't want to die. You. I don't want God to kill me. You see, their reason is not good enough. That's what I keep telling people. Your reason is not good enough. You haven't found your reason yet. When, when you say, I'm, I'm not doing this or I'm not sinning because I am afraid that God will kill me. You see, number one, that is, that is, that is a big lie. Because God is not out to kill you. So if that is your reason, one day you will grow in God and you will discover the love of God that he is not out to kill me. And if you don't take time, at that day you discover that something else will happen in your life. Your heart will be let loose to the evil you have not done before and you will begin to do it. Because they say, ah, it's like someone lied to me about God. <laughs> You know, that's why I say, like, yeah, you're born again, you work with the government or you work in an organization and there are corrupt people everywhere. Why are you not corrupt? Why don't you steal like them? Say, ah, I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to steal because I, I don't want to miss heaven. It's not good enough. The reason we don't steal is because we have a source of supply. So we don't need to steal. The reason we don't do some of the things that other people do is because we know and understand who we are. 
And when I say this, I'm not saying assumption. I'm saying we have a real-time fellowship with the Lord. He speaks to us. We speak to him. We know and are sure that we are in him. He is with us. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us. And I always say this, why is God with you? To tell you what to do part-time. Praise God. Now, now, when you begin to walk with the Lord like that, that is exactly what Jesus meant when he said, God is seeking for true worshippers. Because he tells you what he wants and you obey him, then worship exists. And then you'll see the glory of God being made manifest in your life. Praise God. My time is up. But I'm loving this. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>